If I were to ask you what exactly is a cocktail, how would you answer that question? Is it the ingredients for you? Is it the technique for you? Is it some other third thing that makes a cocktail a cocktail? The glassware or the ice you use? I think that in truth, it is somehow a combination of all three of those things. And there is no more better minim minimalistic example than the Shakerado on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hello there, my name is Michael. Welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. It is lovely to have you all here today. I'm a bartender and mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we're gonna to talk about an Italian cocktail called the Shakerado. A lot like other cocktails, especially very, very old ones, like the old fashioned, or in some cases, the improved whiskey cocktail, uh, these don't really have really great history. There's not a lot that was written about them because they kind of come from a time that predates the existence of that phenomenon of writing down cocktail recipes. So. There's not a ton of history to share, but there is a sort of lineage to it that is, I think, developed enough to be willing of sharing with you. So let's discuss the background a little bit and then dive into it from there. The Shikarado needs to be predated quite a bit by the phenomenon of icing, not alcohol, but coffee. You see, the Shikarado comes around approximately at the turn of the 20th century as a preparation for espresso, which is a form of coffee that is brewed under pressure and was originally invented in Italy. The act of serving coffee over ice was actually common in Italy uh, as early as the 1700s. And as a result, uh, there was a pretty reasonable extent to say that Eventually, they'd be combined in some other way, ice and coffee, to make a different kind of product. The shakerado needed only for a mixological technique, uh, specifically the act of shaking things to come about in order to make itself exist. And that's exactly what happened. In combination with sugar, espresso would be combined with a cocktail shaker and then shaken to froth it, which is possible because there were a lot of oils that contain a lot of volatile compounds and they will foam up once they are diluted out of their solvent. Think about how uh, when you drink whiskey, you might drop a couple drops of water into your glass and that sort of brings out a lot of the flavor. That's exactly the same thing that is happening there. So that's when the Shakerado really gets its start. It's known as the Cafe Shakerado. It's made with espresso and sugar, usually simple syrup for the sake of ease. And apparently from some of the articles I was reading, it was actually, at least in the modern day, it is kind of seen as like the coffee drinker's espresso martini. There was an article, I think it's in Barista Magazine, there's like a, a, a cons section to this whole article about the Shakerado. And they, they state, oh yeah, it takes a lot of workflow out of the traditional baristas you know, or it takes a different direction out of the traditional priestess workflow or whatever the fuck. I don't know, shut the fuck up. It's a cool way to make coffee. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> In any case, that's where the Shakerado gets its start, as a preparation for espresso, and particularly one that is a bit more desserty in nature, which is kind of the nature of cocktails in general. So it was only a matter of time before it took an alcoholic spin. Sometime in the 1960s, most likely invented actually at Campari's Camparino, uh, which is a bar that they run and operate entirely basing their things off of Campari. Somebody at the bar sometime in the 1960s invented the Campari Shakerado, which is more commonly referred to as just a Shakerado. This was the same principle, taking Campari and shaking it for a long time over ice to add dilution, lengthen, you know, lengthen the spirit, and produce a mild light foam on the top for the sake of aesthetics. You might think, well, hey, hold on, hold on, that's kind of weird. A cocktail with one ingredient, how is that in any way not going to just be that ingredient but watered down? Well, there's a very particular thing about Campari that needs to be noted here. This here is a bottle of Campari. This is a red bitter aperitif from uh, Italy, and it is distinctly different from a lot of other liqueurs in the sense that it is an Amari, uh, or rather an Amaro, which is a specific kind of Italian liqueur that is bitter, and in this case contains a lot of botanicals that are maintained in this cock in this in this bottle. Uh, through the use of oils and infusions and distillations, those things will come out when you shake them over ice and dilute them the same way that they would if you were doing that with whiskey. It's not quite as potent because this isn't a foolproof spirit, this is a liqueur, but still, it will happen. Once this was discovered, it became a very simple, very quick, very easy, very enjoyable, bittersweet and complex cocktail that was snazzy. It looked interesting. It looked 
appealing. And as a result, it became remarkably popular. And we don't, like I said, we don't know who came up with it. We don't know even specifically when. All we have is aware, and that's really all we need. It, it, since then, the Campari Shankarado has been around, f I mean, now, what is that? 70 years and people still like it, 60 years? I can't do math. Point is, it's popular and it's a worthwhile cocktail, especially for somebody who wants to understand exactly how technique plays a role in how we enjoy spirits. Furthermore, I'm going to make the note that I think that the Shakerado is not just a individual cocktail, but ex expands beyond that, is more elevated than that. And in the same way that an old fashioned can be made with any kind of bitters, any kind of sweetener, any kind of spirit diluted together, stirred over ice, I think a Shakerado can be made with most things. And we're gonna do some of that today. So let's go ahead and begin by making a traditional cafe shakerada. For a traditional cafe shakerada, you're going to need some simple syrup and a coffee component of your choosing. In this case, it's going to be either espresso or uh, some cold brew concentrate, which is the option I've gone with. Espresso and cold brew concentrate are gonna work just fine here because they're both uh, sort of diffusing the oils and the volatile compounds from the coffee beans to about the same amount, in fact, maybe more so in cold brew concentrate, um, but just through different methods. This takes more time, espresso takes pressure and then by virtue of applying pressure heat. So thermodynamics. Isn't that fun? <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and make a Cafe Shakerada. We're gonna start off with half an ounce of simple syrup. And then we'll come behind that with three full ounces of cold brew concentrate. And yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> we'll go ahead and fill our shaker with some ice. As always, I'm gonna do one cube whole and one cube crack. We're gonna cap that up, cap that down. And then give it a shake for around 10 seconds. You don't want to go too much further than that because without alcohol, this actually can freeze on you. So 10 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and grab this sour glass here, which is pretty small in volume. That's more or less the reason why I'm grabbing it. I'll uncap our shaker and then double strain that in to catch any ice chips. And that, ladies and gentlemen, goes forward as a cafe shakerado. So as you can see, there is a kind of the issue of a volume here. You lose a lot of volume in coffee when you shake it this way. A lot of it becomes foam and very airy and it doesn't pour anymore. It'll freeze to the ice. I genuinely think that the idea of using espresso here makes this particularly annoying because you can't just add more to it and then shake it some more and then pour it in. You've got to pull another shot. So the cold brew concentrates the way to go here, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and give that a taste. Cheers. That's just a, a damn fine cup of coffee is what that is. <laughs> nice. So the thing about cold brew concentrate and espresso is that they have a lot of coffee flavor to them. And it's very three dimensional in both cases, but the difference between the two, I think, is the length of the evolution. Cold brew has a much greater amount of time to very carefully and with much, you know, I guess sort of broad sweeping uh, accuracy, pull flavors from the coffee. So you're not just getting some of the very sharp acidic oiliness you would find in like a hot coffee. You're also getting these deeper, richer, rootier, chocolatey kind of, almost kind of root beer like notes actually that I'm getting right now. And it's it's just very pleasant and very full bodied, a little sweet, it is kind of desserty. The trick here I think is to use an Italian style coffee. Um, an Italian roast is gonna be uh, a little bit smoky and a little bit uh, bitter, you know, very acrid, uh, acrid and kind of earthy. Um, that would be really phenomenal here. Um, just keep that in mind when you do this, you might wanna be a little bit selective of your coffee choices. That is delicious though. Perfect, perfect dessert aperitif just to, to wash down a bunch of heavy, rich flavors and get the get the gut moving again. <laughs> and you if you're asleep. Let's go ahead and set this aside and then reset and do a Campari Shikarada. Alrighty, so the Campari Shikarada was up next. This comes approximately, you know, 40 to 60 years after the invention of the Cafe Shikarada. And it really is just the use of Campari, which I think is what makes this so fascinating because it's difficult to find a cocktail that is number one based off of just a single ingredient, but at that is based off of an ingredient as complicated and complex and interesting as Campari is. What I think is so cool here is that you've got botanical flavors and you're this kind of bitter orange base to it. and and this kind of oiliness and, and some sweetness too, because it is a liqueur and not a very high proof one, so there's not a lot of heat, but there is a lot of body. The idea of making a shakerada with this is really, I think, phenomenal. 
So without further ado, let's go ahead and make a Campari shaker auto. Grab a cocktail shaker. And into that, we are going to pour just a full three ounces of Campari. And that's it. <laughs> we'll go ahead and add some ice to this so we can shake. And as always, we'll do one whole cube and one cube cracked. We're gonna cap that up and tap that down. <laughs> and then we're gonna shake this for a little bit longer than normal because the dilution is gonna play a bigger role here. Uh, so 15 to 20 seconds should give us enough time to dilute and build a nice appropriate foam. Look at that frost that's built up on the shaker. That's gonna be good. We're gonna grab a smaller sour glass here, uncap our shaker, and then double strain that directly in. Now, as you can see, this has kind of aerated the cocktail, produced a nice thick foam on the top, and sort of given us this very bright, delicious looking cocktail. We are gonna garnish this one. I'm gonna grab a swath of lemon peel here. We're gonna express that over the top like so hit the rim. And then honestly, I am actually just gonna drop that straight on in because I want some of those lemon oils to be in the drink. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Campari Shaker Auto. Let's go ahead and give this a sip. I, um, this is the first thing that I will be drinking after a month sober for dry January. I'm kind of glad that I chose something the lower ABV, um, which is also a plus when you think about it. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Oh, Campari. Oh, I didn't realize how much I missed you. <laughs> so it's Campari. It, it, it tastes like Campari, um, but there is a, a very different kind of texture to it that you don't normally find in Campari, and it's very cold, and some of the sweetness is pronounced. It's interesting. What we've done here is take the spirit, you know, you know kind of dilute it, which uh, the way alcohol works is that it will form suspensions for volatile compounds, and uh, oils uh, up to a certain point. That's the reason why when you put water into absinthe, it forms a loche. That is oils and, and volatile compounds that were stored in the alcohol coming out because it no longer has the density of the high proof alcohol to maintain a solution rather than a suspension. We've done some of that here to a much, much smaller degree. And what that pronounces is this really intense Campari bitterness that is still there, but it's got this kind of edge rubbed off of it, this very particular edge where it's sort of creamy and aerated and zippy and bright. And the orange portions of Campari that a lot of people miss because of the intense bitterness come back and it's much more candy-like. And that bit of lemon across the top and dropped into the drink is just providing this additional characteristic off of which to bounce. And honestly, I don't know if I could have asked for a better cocktail to welcome me back to drinking with. This is bracing and bright and refreshing and delicious and holy fucking shit have I waited so long for this. All right, well that's the classic Campari Shakerado. Let's go ahead and take one more look at the Shakerado platform real quick because I think that it is more than just a singular cocktail or a singular style of preparation, it really can be a blank canvas with which to play with things. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So to reiterate, I think that the Shakerado is not just an interesting way to enjoy Campari, which can be kind of difficult to approach and very sharp and harsh for people who are not used to Amari, but also that the Shakerado platform can be like an old fashioned, in the sense, a way to prepare a spirit. And in this case, it does not relate to a foolproof spirit like a bourbon or a scotch or a gin or a rum, but rather specifically to bitter liqueurs. And in that case, most of Italy's available Amari. One such Amari that is a big favorite in my house right now is Fernet Branca Menta, which is a sweet mint form of Fernet Branca. We've talked about it on the show before. It appears in the Brancolata, um, and it is a sweet, mint, delicious, medicinal, herbal, awesome thing that everybody should have in their house, especially if you're invested in mixology like I am. This, I will say, I have done before. This 
is a phenomenal way to enjoy Fernet Branca because much like with the Campari, it cuts off a lot of the very sharp, harsh medicinal edges that Fernet Branca and Fernet Branca Menta usually have. And it brings about a sweetness and a foam and a lightness and it's awesome. And uh, we're gonna make one right now. Let's make a Branca Menta Shakerado, I guess. Like our Shakerados before, this is a one ingredient cocktail. So that's three ounces of Branca Menta. That's all our ingredients. Let's go ahead and grab some ice. And as always, we're gonna do one whole cube and one cube cracked. We are going to cap that up, tap that down, and then shake that for anywhere from 15 to 20 to 25 seconds. I mean, you really wanna just blast the absolute shit out of this thing. So let's get started. That awesome sheen of ice on the shaker, that is definitely something you wanna see. We're gonna grab a piece of stemware here, a Nick and Nora, pop that top off our shaker and double strain that in. Now, much like with uh, coffee cocktails, you'll see that this is kind of hazy and opaque right now, but is steadily forming a foam towards the top. Uh, that will settle and eventually you will get a nice thick sheen along the top. There is no garnish for this cocktail, so that is a Fernet Brancamenta Shakerado. Okay, let's go ahead and give a cocktail that I think you can tell based on my wash line, I know for a fact fits well in this glass. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a sip. Cheers. Oh man. Oh man, that's good. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize how much I missed Campari. I knew how much I missed this. I missed it a lot. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, this is fucking phenomenal. It is the perfect Amaro to use for a Shakerado, and allow me to explain why. Fernet Bracamenta is less high proof than traditional Fernet Branca. Uh, Fernet Branca is 39% alcohol by volume. This is 30, uh, and it is considerably sweeter than traditional Fernet Branca, which is sort of the peak pinnacle of bitterness out of an Amaro. Uh, so what you're getting here is a lot of those very similar notes, some of those very medicinal rhubarb and myrrh and frankincense and very unique uh, sort of botanical flavors, uh, but with a lot of backing sweetness. And it takes the edge off and it gives it a very, you know, very present and full bodied mouthfeel uh, by itself. All, just like that or on the rocks, it's great. But, there's another change here. There's more mint present in the flavor profile of Fernet Branca Menta than there is with regular Fernet Branca, which even then people would consider regular Fernet Branca Minty, but this is predominantly mint. When you shake up the sort of dark, rooty acridness of Fernet Branca that has all of this extra mint and sweetness added to it, do you wanna know what it tastes like? It tastes like a chocolate mint milkshake. It is light and zippy and airy and creamy and smooth and sweet, but not super, super sweet. It is just the right amount of sweet because there's enough body from the weight of the spirit, how high proof it is, to make it just so perfectly rounded. I cannot express to you how many times I have had this exact cocktail in the past. This is legitimately one of the best ways to make a Shakerado, if not the best way. Because think about what you're doing here. You're taking some of that proof and some of that thickness and some of that body and some of that sweetness, you're lengthening it out a little bit, you're making it a little bit more approachable, you're taking all the harsh edges off of it and you're chilling it like fucking crazy. So you get in the end, this very bright, very heavily chilled, very well diluted, very concisely built cocktail that is just fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm taking another sip. This is, I might finish this on camera. It's, it's perfect. It opens with bright, sweet present mint and coming up behind that is the sort of rich dark chocolate but rootier than that sort of like somewhere between dark chocolate and coffee beans and tree barks and botanicals and and it's just ah uh. have you ever been so happy with something that you're angry i don't know how else to describe this sensation i'm experiencing right now oh my god i would love to try this with Averna. I would love to try this with a Marano Nino. I just bought a bottle, uh, bottle of Cardamaro, which I think is like a, uh, probably a cardamom based Amaro. I haven't tried it yet, but I would love to try it in a Shakerado platform just to see what it tastes like. And that's the thing that's great about this. You can taste everything that 
the Fernet Branca Menta has to offer and also get an idea of what its utility is in other cocktails, where it is not the feature of the drink, but rather what it adds to that composition once it has been shaken. And that is why I fucking love the Shakerado. All right, so, rant aside, we've got our three Shakerados here, our traditional Cafe Shakerado, our Campari Shakerado from the 1960s, and my submission to the beautiful world that is hopefully uh, rapidly developing the Shakerado, uh, Fernet Branca Menta Shakerado. The, the, the Mentorado, bron bron Broncarado, bron bron Bronca, bron we'll figure it out. We'll figure it, we'll, I'll, I'll put something on the screen in post. And that's what the name of this is. There you go. <laughs> anyway, that's our, uh, our video on the Shakerado done three different ways. Uh, a very, very classic way, the traditional sort of like modern way, and the uh, experimental mixological way. In essence, I hope that this leads you guys to try something new and to experience maybe a class of spirit you never had before, or work with coffee, which is something you don't normally touch in your bar, or hell, maybe find a way to enjoy Campari, which I mean, this might be my new favorite way to enjoy Campari, I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway, let's go ahead and do a reading from our book, Crisp Toasts. We left off in the section on adversity where we still continue from today, and today's toast will go as such. If the world is going wrong, forget it. Sorrow never lingers long, forget it. If your neighbor bears ill will, if your conscience won't be still, if you owe an ancient bill, forget it. <laughs> Cheers. I don't know if anything kills brain cells in quite the same way that alcohol does, but if it helps me forget it, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. If you enjoyed it, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more. I make a new episode every single Friday, and then sometimes on Tuesdays, depending on how much work I have time to get done. So go ahead and click the bell notification if you want to be notified whenever I make a new episode. You can also find me on uh, TikTok and other social media that are appearing on the screen now or have been up for some time. I don't really use many of them very frequently, and really I'm kind of just here in TikTok, but if you want to follow me in all those other places, you can as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I will see you all in the next episode. Please remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Cheers and bye-bye.